Uh, hi everyone, welcome to our presentation on the NHS Act 2, the clinician edition. Uh, so the two problems that we started with, the first one is that currently getting access to medical records for patients, uh, much like pulling teeth, can be hard, slow, and sometimes incredibly painful. Um, and secondly, that currently collaboration between clinicians and clinicians, and in particular clinicians and patients, um, is mostly limited to face-to-face -face conversations. So we're trying to find a way where you can do that remotely and have a bit more autonomy between people. So the overview of our solution is a sister app to the existing <coughs> NHS app, which was released earlier this year. Uh, it has two interfaces, a mobile version and a web-based version. Um, and it would have two-factor authentication for security and restricted access. So you'd log in using your NHS login uh, on your NHS smart card and your mm -hmm. company. Um, and that would dictate what you can see. So for example, the GP could see the records of people in their GP surgery. If you're an a &E doctor or you're a paramedic, you can access on an iPad and who you can see is dependent on who's just come into your ward into the back of your ambulance. Um, this would allow faster access to NHS data, not just medical records, but also looking things up on the NHS databases, uh, such as disease and condition information. And it would also enable patients to have more autonomy over their data because they can use their NHS patients app to communicate with the NHS clinicians app and have communications through there. So we can show you this a bit differently. So this is a quick demo of, of how a community physio might use the app to access some information about patients they're seeing. So they'd log into the app <coughs> and then they'd also get a text message with a code. They could then search their patients under patients that they've got assigned to them. Famous message on next. <laughs> and then we can see there that um, on their social care record, they're non weight bearing for six weeks. So the physio thinks that perhaps this could change, perhaps, perhaps it needs to change. So they're just going to message the surgeon. Uh, so as a surgeon, um, I go on the website and I've received a notification saying I've got a message from, from the physio. So I'm going to type the RHS number in there, uh, press search, and as you know, MDD, it will just come up with um, that patient's medical profile. I can see a little summary of the medical profile. I'm going to the hospital records and see that, okay, yeah, they had a surgery, and I can collaborate with the physio that way and uh, run a physio treatment. Uh, also, uh, as James mentioned earlier, there's a bit about the consent thing. So, uh, as a surgeon, I don't have to access all the information, uh, like for example, social care, but I can request consent, um, which we can do from whatever the patient has preferred that the communication is. So the hope would be that the app could interface with those like, databases already available or if those other services and then APIs and it could start to pull from all those yeah, different areas of the NHS and start to pull them into one user interface. Uh, obviously that would be dependent on the permissions given by those services or who owns them and how the data is handled. Um, but this is more of a, a sort of blue sky thinking version of this is what it could be if everyone very nicely and got along together. Part <laughs> 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 of it as well is, like you said, it's quite difficult to sift through all that information. So this, you'd have an individual clinician profile, so the physio could be certain things that it would be likely to want to look at, so it would show you those first, so you're not having to sift through absolutely everything in blood tests that they, they just don't need to know about. Just wanted to pick up on the phrase you used there. If everyone plays nicely, <laughs> that's really the challenge, isn't it? And making change happen. What What do you think are the risks of this? Uh, so I think some of the risks would be that people aren't willing to share their data. Um, so there's of course the problem that people don't want their medical records being accessed by any any doctor or any paramedic. Then they might object to that. But in that case, it'd just be a case of you try to access their information. You're not allowed in. And then you're back to where you already are. You already are. So I think in that sort of case, it's only you can have improvement or everything stays the same. Yeah, very much. 
on top of that, just saying that Alliant always starts with a small improvement, so even if only a, like a certain demographic of uh, patient decides they want to like, go along with this and uh, make their data available, then it starts to change on top of that. Then yeah. people get more comfortable with it. And then once the infrastructure starts being in place and starts snowballing, more people want to be, want to be part of it because it's better for your healthcare and it's easier for the doctors. And eventually it might just be pushed so that that's the default and you opt out rather than at the moment where you lock in. Um, so I think, yeah, the risks will get mitigated over time uh, as there's more involvement and all the folks start getting ironed out. And we're hoping that as the NHS app is already being rolled out, that that's developing a certain level of trust in that system. Thank you very much.